Greetings, everyone. This is Payman Lorenzo, your host of the uh, Leaders of the Heart podcast today. I have a very good, uh, uh, I have a great uh, guest for us, John. Uh, John is a is doing great things. He's part of the community that I'm part of, the uh, the um, uh, Gorgeous Secret, and he has a tremendous story he's going to share with us. John, thank you for being here today. Thank you very much for having me. Much appreciated. My pleasure. So let's start first with with, with a start. For, for those that don't know John, who's John? Tell us a little bit about you and what makes John being John. Tell us about some something Okay, tell us first about you and then I'll ask you about something juicy, unique about you. That's a deep question, isn't it? You can't hit me with the deep ones right no, away. Yeah, let's, let's <laughs> tell, tell us who's John. That's that's a question I ask myself every day, um, right? <laughs> Who is John? I'm asking um, all the time. <laughs> I'm going to say the juicy stuff is, um, you know. Wait, I, you I mean something unique about you that not many people know about you and that's part of the big essence of who you are. So a big part of who I am is someone who genuinely has a certain, I'm, I'm going to say a hero complex. Now, I've had discussions about the hero complex before. It seems to be quite a popular trait in America. Um, a lot of people have a hero complex. They want to save people. They want to be the big person uh -huh. and rescue people. For me, I just want to make sure everyone is in a good place. Mm -hmm make sure everybody is smiling and everything's fine and i think that's kind of been born out of my own experiences we've not been in a good place and i understand how painful it is so and so i don't want other people to experience the same thing i know other people do and other people experience it on a deeper level than i have, I have done in the past but the yeah. thought of other people going through that is something I want to avoid. So a big, everything I do, business-wise, family-wise, everything's for making the world a better place and ultimately making people enjoy life pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, um, what, uh, what wakes you up in the morning when you wake up? What drives you? What's your why? Uh, usually what wakes me up in the morning is my 11 month old daughter. Um, <laughs> she normally does that multiple times every morning. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, so what wakes me up aside from my children is I, I recently discovered what drives me and what my goals are and what makes me continue doing what I do is because I crave on a deep level to win. And I think a lot of people do to a certain extent. This translates into lots of different things. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it might just be the endorphin hits in, in, in your brain, but ultimately it's, it's a win. And for me, you know, I think I've already covered a little bit of what helps me win, seeing other people win is, is a win for myself. But making progress each day and certainly not falling backwards. So I have genuinely appreciated the monk manual that I got recently that has helped me implement big wins each day and i think you know i now wake up and each night before i go to bed i write down my priorities for the next day something that's going to help me win and help me move forward so when i wake up i know instantly what my plans are for the for the day and i know that by the end of the day i will be in a much better position and i think that gives me kind of inspiration to to hit the day with some momentum and that's something i struggled with for a long time you know it's funny you mentioned that because i have my monk manual right here on my desk and I'm ashamed to say that I haven't even used it once. So I need to, you know what? From today, from tonight, I'll start using this because I can see how I can buy, buy. Because one thing that we entrepreneurs struggle with, especially coming from, at least me personally, when you come from a corporate background, you know, you know exactly what to do each day. You have a plan that's already set up by your boss or whatever your department, you have quotas, you know exactly what to do when you sit on your desk. And when you when you make the transition into entrepreneurship, you don't. And that's where a lot of people end up wasting a lot of time, myself included, because again, as I said, I'm not even doing the basics, which is using my monk manual. Yeah. And I will definitely do that because that's what I need. I've been, I wouldn't say wasting, but drifting through days without accomplishing much because once you write it down, you have it in front of you, you know exactly what to do. It's like, like a plan. Yep. If you don't have a plan, if you don't know where you're going, 
you're going to end up nowhere. And that's something if, if, that... If you're not on a path, you're just wandering around the forest with no clarity on which direction you're going or why you are going that direction. You need a clear path to walk through. Yeah. And the path may split off from time to time. It may take a slightly different course, but as long as you're on a path, yeah. you're certainly moving forwards. That's an excellent reminder for myself included that uh, I need to implement that starting from 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 right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. I, you know, we all know what to do, but from time to time, we need a reminder, a refresher, or a, or a proverbial kick in the butt. I agree. So, so yeah, so cool, awesome. So you mentioned that uh, you're on a mission. You're on a mission to um, to offer an alternative path to traditional nine to five. What do you mean? Please expand on that. So, from a young age, I realized that society and my parents in general everyone around me had kind of set out a life template a blueprint for how to live life mm -hmm. which involves getting a nine to five in as high a possible career as you can ideally you know the dream career is a doctor or an astronaut or a rocket oh, yeah. scientist something yeah. like that no one ever recommends entrepreneur because it comes with lots of risks so normally it's the traditional career you, have, you get a house, you buy a house, you get a nice car, you get married and you have three children. That's the blueprint for life. It can change slightly, but that's pretty much a reasonable expectation for, for most people. And from a young age, a very young age, while I was still in school, I realized that it just didn't resonate with me. And I didn't like the idea of following that path. So I decided to kind of do my own thing. And I struggled with things from a young age, trying to figure out what my purpose was, what I was going to do, what the long-term plan was. And so, yeah, sorry, rewind. Can you tell me what the original question was? You might find out, you might realize very shortly that I go off on a bit of a tangent sometimes. Once you get me speaking, I don't stop. So I, I no, <laughs> that's it's okay. Really because <laughs> I, I just before before this, I was I did a two hour presentation and I have the exact same sentence word by word that I use because I'm the same, uh, you know, sometimes because especially when I speak about something I'm passionate about, I speak from the heart yep. and it's not scripted. And I tend yep. on going on, on these long, sometimes unlimited tangents and I end up on all kind of different roads and paths. And I even think I use the exact same wording that you used, that you just said to the most of the presentation, but uh, yeah, no, no worries. That's a bottom line, no worries. So you mentioned that uh, the, the typical path, which is uh, uh, get a, as high a paying job as you can, get uh, married, get a 2.5 or three kids as you can. Yeah. And before that, going to college. Yeah. Well, that's a typical thing that f I was on that path as well. And uh, you know, did you, where did you get that? that uh, did you read that somewhere or it was just always ingrained in you that, hey, this is not the path? Ingrained in my head from a young age. So I'm going to say around the age of 13 and 14, it, it kind of hit me on a deep level at the age of 14. And I decided the next few years were almost set out for me. Because at the age of 14 at, at school, they kind of push. Because we left school at 16 and then we decide you go to college or, or you go get an apprenticeship somewhere. So at the age of 14, they start quite intensely pushing uh, everything about qualifications and your future. You're going through careers advice, trying to figure out what your purpose is. And so they push that quite intensely. And mm -hmm. I just, I, I didn't like it. I automatically rebelled and stayed away. But mm -hmm. even at a young age, I used to build websites for different companies. I used to maintain their websites, make a, a nice little bit of pocket money. I'd build websites and sell them. And my parents pushed me down that route. They were like, John, that's your thing. You're good at this. You go do that. And because my parents pushed me, I automatically went, no, I'm not doing that anymore. And I never did anything with websites anymore. I, I, I stopped pretty quickly. And I was doing incredibly well, to be honest. At a young age, I was making a nice little bit of income. And if I continued with it, certainly I would probably be in a, a reasonably high career or that would be my, I guess, long-term uh, sole business of mine. But I automatically rebelled and said, no, you," because they took the fun out of it. Exactly. When it becomes a career, the fun is gone. And I kind of did it as a hobby. Um, you know, it, it was my thing that I enjoyed. I actually started building websites for a game that I played. We wanted to build a community website. So I actually learned how to program using uh, HTML. So I built my all the websites using the... What game was that? Uh, it was MechWarrior 4, okay. which is uh, robots battling with the big joysticks. And it was... a. Wow. Uh, what was it make it might be number three i don't know it was a long time ago now i'm a big gamer but i was more into say a sport like formula one and football games but yeah, yeah, I, yeah. countless 
days and nights. Once you start playing, you don't even, you don't even, hours just keep on going. Don't even realize that you need to go grab something to eat. The yep. only break you get is just go to the bathroom and back at it right away. You know Actually, what I mean? I dropped out of school at the age of 14 to play a video game uh -huh. as well. I, and I'm and I'm uh, and I can say that I've uh, I've skipped quite a few days of university just because I wanted to stay to play those games. Yep. I don't feel proud about those, but that's part of what we go through, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, we've probably taken something away from it. We've learned lessons from it. You know, I'm, I'm never going to recommend my kids go through the same experiences. Hopefully, I've learned enough from them to be able to pass on to my children. Uh, but you know, yeah, we do what we. We do what we do best at the time based on the tools we've got access to and the information. You know, it's all about lessons. This life, you know, the, this life is, is a bigger scale university. We all learn. Just like when you go to college, you decide what major you want to get into, what classes, topic you want to learn at a specific uh, semester. Yeah. It's the same thing in life. It's, it's those, uh, those events, those, uh, you know, hardships or whatever, those days wasted playing video games whatever that we decide subconsciously what do we want to, to learn and the only way to learn us is unfortunately the hard way yeah <laughs> if, you tell, if you tell someone doesn't matter if it's a kid if it's an adult don't do that guess what they will want to do that twice more you know so Perfect. yeah that's amazing so tell me what can you um tell me one thing that you learned in that process that has really been helping you now and we are in the new business one lesson that you learned the hard way so through uh, any point, are you on about through life or? Uh, life or anything that's, that's helping you today and, and building the business that you want. Uh, so the first thing that pops in my head is the best person to look after me and make sure I succeed and move forward is me. Exactly. I, sp I spent a long time kind of relying on other people in careers, you know, <laughs> Uh, when I worked, worked at uh, my, my normal nine to five jobs, although these days I think you're lucky if you actually work nine to five, it's more like seven to seven, oh, yeah. eight days per week kind of careers these days. Um, but when I worked in them, you know, I always thought I was the good guy. I was the person who got stuck in. I put my head down. I did my job correctly. I went above and beyond to find shortcuts for the, uh, for the company that I worked for to make things more efficiently. Uh, you know, I was always referred to as like the goody two shoes. I even worked at a, a new car dealership and I was nicknamed Honest John because I used to downsell customers and make sure they got the right car. Not the one that paid the most profit for the company. I made sure they got the right car and I was nicknamed Honest John. I was that type of person. How long did you last there? Uh, a year before I was put, kind of pushed out as I was influenced to go. New management came in and my style didn't Very fit with yeah. So, so that was interesting. Okay. But I always thought having that mentality, eventually I'd work for the right company and someone would notice and they would understand John's a real asset to this company. That's always what went through my head. You know, John's a real asset. He never calls in sick. He never takes days off. He's always at work on time. You know, he comes in and he's, and he's clean and he's got his uniform on and he's fresh and he does his job properly. And I thought someone will eventually realize and then I'd gone through a, a few different careers and at the car sales job, when I was, I'm going to say influenced to leave, I was pretty much pushed out of the workplace there. And I realized I'd spent my entire working life relying on somebody else to make sure my bills were paid, my children were fed, and I was happy. And I wasn't, I wasn't enjoying my, my career, my work life. And I wanted to see what other options there were. And I knew going at it alone was a very, very big, scary world. And I knew it was going to present lots of troubles and difficulties. And where I'm at now, I'm glad I took that step. But knowing what I know now, if I knew it back then, I probably wouldn't have gone down this route because I would have seen all of the hurdles and all of the difficulties and all of the troubles along the way. And it would have probably scared me. But when you kind of accomplish them one by one, and you're on a path kind of working your way through these hurdles, which will constantly pop up. I don't think that ever ends and work your way through to a position. Eventually you can kind of look back and see, do you know what? I've actually come a long way and I've actually accomplished so many obstacles. And I think, do you know, I genuinely think the monk manual helps with this too, because you can flick back through the pages and you can see the things you've accomplished because you've ticked them off. Mm -hmm. And I think that's valuable for a lot of people. 
And most people don't do that. That is something I teach uh, for my clients as well. I teach them to kind of structure things in a way where you can actually look back and see how much you've accomplished. Because I think we need that as humans. We need the validation as well. Awesome, for sure. So you mentioned something uh, very interesting. You said um, realize that uh, you cannot afford to, uh, to rely on others. At what point did you know, did you realize, was there a specific moment, a turning point in your, in your life that's, hey, enough of that. I'm the only one in charge of my life and not the boss or, or the supervisor, or whatever. Was it a, a specific moment or event or was that an accumulation of small little detail that told you, screw that, I want to take things in my hands? I saw, I think it was a combination of events that led up to a very specific point. Mm -hmm. And I think that I got goosebumps then when I was thought of it. Um, I think that very specific point was approximately five years ago. Uh, my little boy was very young. And it was when I'd uh, been pushed out of the, the workplace and I decided to go out things alone. And I kind of got over a period of time, got myself into quite a deep, dark mental state. And I struggled with lots of things, but I didn't know what I was struggling with. I just knew I was struggling and I tried lots of different things and they didn't pan out. And I was relying on other people to keep, to kind of help, you know, family, friends, my girlfriend at the time was struggling severely with some things. And I kind of wanted her to be able to help me, but she needed help even more so. Um, and I didn't know what to do. And I decided one day to, uh, I decided to commit and ask for professional help. So I ended up calling my doctors to say, I want to come and speak to somebody. And I remember the lady asked what it was about. And I says, it is personal. And at the time, I wasn't really clear on what the issue was or what I was hoping to gain from visiting the doctors. I just knew I needed to speak to someone who, I don't know, someone intelligent enough to maybe suggest something for me. So I remember going to the doctors uh, and my name had popped up on a board and called me through. So I went and sat down on this nice little fancy wooden bench outside the doctor's office. And then you just wait for the doctor to come open the door and, and invite you in. So I'm sat on this bench outside with my head down, feeling this incredibly deep pit of despair and hatred and shame for myself. And I didn't know where it came from, why it was there. I just felt sick with, with myself or something. And I knew the doctor was going to open the door and invite me in any second. And I still didn't know what I was going to say. I was still worried that the doctor would think I was wasting their time or I was just attention seeking. But the, so the doctor eventually came, she opened the door and she invited me in a lovely lady. And I sat down on a chair right next to her. And she says to me, she says, how can I help today? And before she said that, I had absolutely no idea what I was going to say. Absolutely no idea. But as soon as she said it, just instinctively, I opened my mouth and the words that fell out of my mouth were, I have failed. And as soon as I said, I have failed, I realized that was what my issue was. I felt like I had failed at my career uh, business. I'd failed at being a parent. I'd failed at being a, uh, a boyfriend. I'd failed at being a son. Um, I got some major goosebumps going on in my back right now thinking of this stuff, but I basically just failed it at what I considered every aspect of my life and my job as a, as a good human being and as a father and as a, uh, as a partner, you know, I'd kind of failed in every aspect. In reality, looking back, I succeeded in lots of different places. I just didn't meet my own expectations and that's all it was. You know, some people would look at the things that I'd managed to accomplish and think that's pretty amazing. And I'm grateful for that. You know, I am proud of certain things, but I didn't meet my own expectations. And that was what the issue was. And it took me a long time to realize that. Is it because you were more demanding of yourself and yet you much higher expectations that you said, you, you, and that's something that I can also relate to because we, we've accomplished things that we don't think much of it, but other would consider that as quite an achievement. So would you say because... I don't know, maybe you were too perfectionist or you, 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 you were too hard on yourself or uh, so tell us a bit more about that. Was it because of that, that you had this feeling of failure while someone looking from an outside perspective, it might look like, hey, it's not a failure. It's even something quite successful. I think I was incredibly hard on myself, but I think within a short period of time, there were quite a few things that came together that, that, that were difficult just on their own, they were difficult to manage. You know, when you've got a business and a, a new child that had come along, uh, I had my my first daughter from a previous relationship and it was hard to manage that as well. My girlfriend was in quite a, a difficult place and I was struggling to manage that. 
it was difficult to manage any one of them things on their own. But all of them coming at the same time, especially when I'd lost my career and had absolutely no idea what to do next. Yeah. And so I decided to go full on and say, I'm taking full control. I'm going to decide when I get paid and started my own. I say started my own business. I started a, a network marketing business. Oh, yeah. Kind of hit that full on. And I did, you know, I was involved in network marketing for quite a few years and, and, and I did quite well at it. it. It was, it was a struggle at times. I certainly learned a lot from it and it has certainly contributed massively to where I am today and kind of the mindset that I have now and some of the things that I've learned. Yeah. Wow. Getting very deep today. <laughs> no, it's, it's interesting because I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that you're opening up and telling me things that are very personal and that's, that's what it's all about to get into know someone at a deeper level. So yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, and, sure. uh, so transition from that. So so now you're saying you're helping people transition from from a nine to five to something much better. And um, do you have uh, so tell us about your business? Do you have like a course? Do you have like a membership? Uh, how do you help people? Let's say for example, a prospect right now is watching this. Tell us more about walk them through about what is the process of them joining you and how they can benefit from from what you're doing. So the primary goal over the first 30 days is to basically discover uh, their own, what I refer to as their value, which includes their, their passions, their interests, their talents, and their hobbies. We like to understand a bit more about them, what kind of makes them tick, what they enjoy. And we look to see if we can build a business model around that, mm -hmm. simply because in any business, there are days that are more difficult than others. And if you are running a business that you don't enjoy or have a passion for, or at least an interest, it's incredibly easy to say, I'm done, I'm out. You know, yeah. it was too difficult, I'm over it. But if you genuinely enjoy it or you have a talent for it, it's easy to overcome those obstacles. So we initially tried to find what that business model would be. Also in the first 30 days, we then put together a solution or a product or a service, whatever it may be. And then we discover who their perfect clients are, where they are. Uh, we go quite into detail about this to make it incredibly easy. But ultimately, we have 30 days to put together a profitable business, a business that works, a business that doesn't take crazy amounts of time because I'm not a fan of working 60 hours a week. Even if it's your own business, I cannot condone it. And I cannot get behind helping someone build a business where they do that. That's not something I stand for. I stand for working as little hours as possible, if I'm honest, while still maintaining a healthy business and a healthy lifestyle. Um, so that's that's pretty much the first 30 days, getting to a profitable level. And then it's ongoing support, kind of working towards building to the six-figure level based on what I know and what I've put into place in the past with building the businesses that I've done as well. Cool. So um, is your program currently, are you just launching it or has it been going around going for, for a long time? So in the last couple of months, I have sold the majority of my previous company. And the reason I did that is because I got to a level where I realized I had built the company to about as far as I can. And I wanted to transition to something new. I genuinely enjoy coaching. It's something I've enjoyed for some time, but I've kind of just done it with friends and family and shared a few tips. And I've done bits and bats with, with people that I know, but I decided to, uh, to kind of hit it full on, to give it my 100%. And this was only... This was October, so October, middle of October sometime, I decided to run. I ran a five-day challenge, which was a free challenge, invited a lot of people into a group, and I basically broke down everything that I teach over the 30 days and put a simplified version of it across five days, small task each day, and by the end of the five days, they should have a good idea of what their business is going to be. Uh, and then, of course, I, I gave them the option to work with me long-term with some of the stuff that I do, so... I'm a fan of one-on-one -on -one coaching. I think there are pros and cons to one-on-one -on -one coaching. I think there are pros and cons to group coaching on its own and the same with module coaching. So I try to incorporate everything. So there's a combination of all three. So they do have the modules where they go through and learn some of these aspects that they have to learn with any business. Uh, we have group coaching in there too. And then the one-on-one -on -one coaching is available for the certain things that may pop up in your business. It's incredibly hard to teach. You know, you cannot teach general business 
because there's so many different things depending on what your model is. So we do one-on-one -on -one coaching in there too. It's all part of a simple package. So what's your, who's your ideal customer? Uh, so my ideal customer is a guy called Kevin. He's 33 years old. He lives in Leeds in the UK. Wow. He, he enjoys, <laughs> he enjoys racing and golf. He earns about 40 K per year. And it has about 50k invested in properties. And in fact, no, he owns multiple properties, but he's got about 50k sat in savings. And the wow. reason I came up with this is basically because there's somebody I know, and some I teach this in, in my training. If when you're writing down your what I call your ideal client avatar, if there's somebody you know who would be your ideal client, that write them down, write their name, their age, what they do, what they identify themselves as, where they spend their time online, where they spend their time locally, what their hobbies are, what keeps them awake at night, how many kids they've got, what they aspire to be, what they wanted to be when they were younger. So we write all these down to try and figure out who your ideal client is. And then everything we do with regards to sales funnels, websites, uh, advertising, business cards, logos is all directed at Kevin. Because then when Kevin sees it, he will buy nearly 100% of the time. And there'll be other people that are very similar to Kevin, obviously not exactly Kevin, and they will also see your messages and they will buy nearly every single time. It makes it so much easier to run a business when you are targeting your ideal client, so much easier. Absolutely. I remember when I first, uh, when we first uh, chatting because I like helping people with uh, identifying the ideal customer. And uh, when I asked you, who's your ideal customer? And you sent me an extremely, probably the most, precise profile is almost spooky to me. Whoa, this guy gets it, you know? Uh, can find I, I like it when people ask me that one now. If you asked me that one six months ago, I had a good idea of who my ideal client was, but I never actually put it into writing. I never wrote these details down. So if you asked me, I'd have probably said, I don't know, somebody who likes to build businesses, somebody who likes making money. You know, I just said the the generic statement, you know, I'm helping people make money and kind of create a better lifestyle. So I just thought I want to help people that like making money. But in reality, you have to be incredibly specific about it. And that's been a very difficult pill to swallow to accept how specific you have to be. But it works tremendously. It's an amazing tool. You even went as far as getting a profile picture for Kevin from Google or whatnot. Yep. Do you have one for male, one for female, or are you strictly targeting male? No, no. So, so I stuck with Kevin. Um, you know, obviously, I'm not against working with, I don't know, Katrina or whatever she may be called. Um, I'm certainly not against that. I can help Katrina just as well. So I went with somebody who fits every single possible combination of what I like to work with. And as a male at 33 years of age, it's slightly easier for me to work with males at 33 years of age because I think in a, you know, males tend to think in a slightly different way to females. I'm talking quite general right now. So I figured it would be easy for me to work with the Kevin rather than Katrina, but I still have my own Katrinas that are my clients. You know, I still have a portion of my clients that are female. That's beautiful. And I just music in my ears because uh, that's something that I'm very passionate about helping people. And I've written um, fairly, I would say fairly, um, you know, detailed document on that I shared on the group. It's about that, it's about I, because everybody wants to help people, but if a lot of people are being too vague, I want to help people make more money. I want people, uh, you know, lose weight or reach six figure. Well, all of these are novel and good. And people want to help other people with all of their problems. But that's something that only God can do. You know, what we can do is just focus on someone that we can we can relate to, that we understand. Because at the end of the day, we're dealing with people. It's about understanding the person. And, and the best way to understand a person is, is looking at someone. For example, you have, look in an industry or a niche that you either have experience in, credentials, that you work in yourself. That, for example, you yourself are part of, whether it's the hobby, the age category, even the ethnic group or the faith, religion, because the more clear you can be, like, for example, in our Amazon Business Academy, we, and I keep using that example all the time, there's a Mexican-American guy, mid-30s, he's a very fit guy, buff, you know, very fitness guy, uh, and he wanted to launch a fitness product. And... Uh, 
for anyone that knows anything about e-commerce, the fitness niche is one of the most competitive niches out there. And I told them, listen, buddy, unless you have a seven-figure, high six-figure, seven-figure budget for marketing alone, you're not going to survive. So instead, what you can do, why don't you first identify the ideal person you want to you want to help for example let's let's look at you you're mexican uh, sorry you're latino you're mid-30s you fit you, you're married you have kids you want to work out and fun so why don't you target latino couples in their 30s who want to work out with their kids and in a fun environment that's a much more defined demography yeah that first of all it's all about building report and trust and they can see you as one of their own and once you do that, it's very easy for you to build an audience and you can launch any product you want, any consulting, any coaching. They will be much more, infinitely more receptive to that than you just running some advertising cold and trying to, to, to compete with all these huge, massive brands with unlimited pockets. And that's just the exact same thing I'm trying to, to help with, this, with the people in the group that, hey, guys, yes, I know you come from a good heart, good position, want to help everyone with all the problems, but leave that to God. That's beyond our capacity. Instead, focus on one specific person with one specific issue. Sure, we all, we all have multiple issues, but focus on the main number one. For example, in our case, in Amazon FBA Academy, there's a lot of courses that teach people how to make money, six-figure, whatever amount of figures online and, and launching their amazing e-commerce business. But while that is good and possible for someone with no experience, it's next time possible. Instead, what, we, what we're doing and we asked, what is the single most important thing that someone needs to learn, to master, and, and what kind of person they have to become that's even equally important to reach that. And for us and our businesses to be able to find, select, source, and launch the first product within 90 days. Once you've done that, you've gone through these steps, you've uh, mastered these, 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 these steps, then you can take and replicate those and do and to, to, to find your second, launch your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth, your tenth. And that's when you will reach your, your financial goals, whatever they may be, 10K a month, six figures, whatever. And I see the same thing in, in, in the coaching program. We are, a lot of people, I mean, in the beginning, at least I was seeing, seeing people say, I, I want to help struggling coaches make six figures. Well, that is nice, but six figure, that's quite, quite vague. In order for you to achieve that, what does person need to learn and master? Who do they have to become? And in, in most consulting businesses, it's, it's about getting that first paying client. Yeah. Learning the skills, learning the, the, the proper mindset to get that first crucial fundamental paying client. And once you've, within however long it's gonna take you, 20, 30, 50 day, whatever. Once you have that, then they can take those skills, replicate them and get the second, the third, the fourth, and that's when they're going to build a thriving, thriving six-figure, seven-figure business. So it's all about mastering the, 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 the basic, most important thing. And that's what most people are, I mean, not a lot of people are missing out. Yes, they come from a good, good position. They have a good heart. They want to help. But again, helping everyone with all the problems, let's leave that to God. Yep. <laughs> you know? I think so. I, I teach quite a bit that. Uh... Yeah. We are often targeting, we come up with a service or a product or some kind of solution. And we kind of open that up to the 7.8 billion people on the planet because we want everyone to be able to buy it. Mm -hmm. And obviously on paper, you know, your initial thought is you want as many potential buyers as possible. That's how you build a big business. But in reality, you don't need 7.8 billion customers. You may only need 10 clients or you may only need 20 sales per month. So if you can refine your message and speak specifically to, uh, to a specific person and you have very simple steps from, from A to Z, it's incredibly easy to build a business. But like you say, a lot of businesses are advertising saying, you, you know, I've got coaching and I take you to six figures. If I said to my next door neighbor, for example, I'm going to do some coaching and take you to six figures, that may sound great to him, but in reality... I'm not giving him the tools to actually get there. I'm going to teach him some broad, some just general business stuff rather than give him, giving him the exact tools that he needs to be able to even just the first few steps. Once he has that, then we can look at the ability to scale it to the next level. You can't go from zero to six figures in, in, by watching a video, by having a phone call or by jumping on a group coaching call. 
there's a series of steps that need to be taken to get there. And a lot of time I see people, for example, saying that uh, they want to, uh, what was that? I just lost it. Damn, my thoughts. Oh, damn. Wow, just lost the train of my thoughts. That normally happens to me. I'm glad it happened to you today, not me. <laughs> All of us. Like, for example, we want to... Um, damn, I just lost it. Screw it. I have to, to edit that part. <laughs> uh, I had it on my mind uh, as you were speaking, but I didn't want to cut you off. And, and when it was my turn to... Speak. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No worries, no worries, no worries. No worries. Uh, yeah, I was probably going to come, come back later, so... Well, I leave know. I leave those parts in when they happen. I'm just like, this happens, guys. You know, it's it's be more transparent, more natural. And it's more transparent. People appreciate it because they don't see that on videos and stuff. Just that it happens. This is normal. This is two people speaking. None of this is scripted, you know. Yeah, exactly. People people lose the train of thought. People get carried away and go off on a tangent, like I do repeatedly. Oh, I do that. I'm yeah. gonna think of that. We're, we're, we're real, we're real people running real businesses, helping people. Sometimes we slip up. Sometimes we say the wrong words. Sometimes we lose our train of thought. It happens. Yeah. So, yeah, what I was saying is that people, you know, oh, yeah. For example, a lot of time I see people say, oh, I will, I will help you get uh, reach your financial goals. But that's very vague. Financial goals for one person may, might mean $1,000 a month, for one can mean five, for one ten, for one can mean a million. So yep. you, have to, you have to understand, identify clearly who you want to target so you know exactly what is the pain point, speak the language, her, uh, touch them exactly where they're, they're struggling. And that all comes down to, to your market research, identifying your ideal, personal, uh, perfect avatar, just like you've done it tremendously well, tremendously clearly. So yeah, so it's all about being as, as clear as possible. And one, one struggle that people have is that, oh, if, I, if I'm too specific, then I might, I might become, I might, uh, you know, I might, I might offend some people. No, it's not about offending people. Like, for example, if, if in me, for example, I'm just using an example. If I'm a, say, 25, 35 year old, say, Christian male, single, that I'm very passionate about fitness, then the best people for me to help are those people, not someone that's 45 or whatever or not into fitness. No, for example, let's say you're an accountant. It's not a good idea for you to, to help doctors because you don't understand them, you don't learn to speak the language. Or for example, let's say you're a male and you want to help single mothers. I don't know, but I don't think that would be the best fit because you don't understand them deeply yep. and vice versa. So that's why it's very important to stick to a person that not only you understand a niche that you ideally worked in or have credentials with, but that you yourself belong into. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a lot of people, you know, have this kind of, I don't know if it's a mental block or what, what would, you, what is your thought on it? Why do you think people are so hesitant and being extremely specific and instead they want to go as wide as possible? I think it's fear because as humans, we make all of our decisions, nearly all of our decisions are based on some kind of fear. It's usually a fear of loss or a fear of failure or a fear of harm. And I think it's a simple case of, so let's say my message, I help married men in their thirties uh, that work in finance I don't know, let's say create a five figure business. Maybe that, that's my message, but maybe there's a married man in his thirties who works in sales, uh, create a five figure business. All of a sudden he see my message and he goes, Oh, that's not for me because you only target people that work in finance and I work in sales. I think business owners are concerned about excluding the guy who works in sales because your message is specific to people that work in finance. They, they, they're concerned that it's going to exclude potential buyers because you've narrowed down so much that it's not available for everyone else. It's like opening a shop and you're saying, I don't know, opening a shop and you only allow males in the building. It's a shop for males only. Um, but now you've excluded all of the females. They're concerned that some females wanted to come in and buy some things. But as soon as you put that message up on the door that says men only, all of a sudden now the, the women can't come and buy things. And I think that's what people are concerned about. Yeah, but the flip side also is that uh, you know when you know when you you become a specialist, you become more valuable. You you, you need to, to to work only with a few clients as opposed to a thousand clients. So in that way, not only are you able to better serve your 
the people you're working with, you're working with people that actually are motivated and are committed to getting results. And, and as a result, you can charge more instead of having like 20, let's say 30 clients at $500 and half of them are not even committed and they're going to be a pain in the ass for you. Yep. Just be extremely specific, work maybe with five or 10. They're highly committed. Of course, they paid much more and you can spend much more one-on-one -on -one time with them to, to ensure they have results. I think that there's a trade-off, but I would personally go with this because I value my time and I want to be able to, to help and serve someone as best as I can. And some, some people may not be a good fit, whether it's personality-wise, whether it's because they're not at that stage in their life at that time uh, and other factors. So I think, yes, people may be you know, worried that they may be excluding some people, but I don't think that's such a bad thing because... You want to work with someone that's special. Let's say you have a problem with your tooth. You're not going to go see, see like, a, like an eye doctor or, yeah. or a general practitioner you just, or a mechanic. You go some someone that's actually specialized. The best, the best example, sorry to cut you off there, the best example I've seen for this is, um, so someone we know mutually mentions that to be the specialist, if you look at general practitioners, for example, so I know in the US you have to pay for appointments. I'm not sure what the cost is, but... Let's say you want to go see a GP, a general practitioner. You might pay $50 to be able to walk in the door before the doctor even says hello to you. That's $50 because he teaches, you know, what he does is general. It's available for everybody, for 7.8 billion people on the planet. But if you want to go see a bone doctor, someone who specializes in bone, it's $1,500 before you even get to walk in the door. Yeah, That's exactly. because he specializes in a very, very, very niche area. Exactly. His value is tremendously high and people who go in know they are getting very, very specific help because they, he offers a specific solution to a specific problem. That's exactly coming full circle. It's, it's all about identifying a very specific person, in your case, Kevin, with a very specific issue because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you're selling personal services as a consultant, I'm selling e-commerce products. We're selling solutions. We're not selling products or services because people don't give a damn about what you or me are selling. What they care about is what we offer can do to them to help their problem. So again, it all comes full circle. Identify the person you want to help. Identify one. And don't try to solve two, three, four, five issues. Just one, the number one. And then if you want, you can offer as an upsell issue number two, number three, number four, depending on your time or if you see if that makes sense for your business and so on and so forth. But always be as specific. That's my thing. Always be as specific as possible because the clearer you are, not only be able to, to help these people at a much deeper level, but also you'll be working with much higher quality of people. Your time will be much more valuable. You'll make more money because you don't want to spend 24 hours each day just working. Yes, you want to help people, but you have your own life when you have passions. So be as specific as you can because the clearer you are, the better you can serve them. At the end of it, it's all about serving people. I, I agree. For you to be able to provide the most value, you need to be able to provide that to people who you have the perfect solution for and people that have certain traits that are in alignment with you. Mm -hmm. They have to be similar to you in certain ways uh, based on whatever business model it is that you put together. As long as you can understand that and it relates to you, for you to be able to provide the most value and make the most different, the, uh, the most difference and solve the biggest problems, you have to know exactly who that person is. And that's, that's what we're in the business of. You know, every business transaction is simply an exchange of value. Every single purchase you ever make is an exchange of value. Every coach you hire, every, every, everything you go through, you know, every tutorial, it's, it's all an exchange of value. And that's pretty much what we do. Yeah, we actually, business is, is about solving problems. The bigger the, the problem you solve, the bigger the pay, you know? So it's, so what's your vision with this? So first of all, is your business already launched? Are you looking to launch it soon or at what stage are you now? So I'm in the very early phases. So I have a good handful of clients. My initial plan, believe it or not, when, when I decided to step into coaching was to go down the route of having a large group of of clients oh no i lost you man cool so i was saying uh when i first started this coaching business my original plan was to kind of target a large broad audience mm -hmm. but as we've covered today that doesn't work 
So my initial plan was to have hundreds of clients doing some group coaching at, you know, a small fee each month. But now I have a small group of clients who have a very clear goal and I have a very specific solution to it tailored to helping them achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. And we've worked extensively together to make sure I have what they need to be able to achieve that. And there have been people that have approached me and we've spoke and whatever their goal is, it's not been in, in alignment with what my, my beliefs are. You know, they may be promoting something that I stand against or, you know, it's just, it's just not in alignment with me and, and my values and my principles. So I have turned a good chunk of people down. So I have a, a, a small group of clients and, and we work pretty well together. You know, it, it kind of works for me quite well time-wise because I'm a big fan of working just a small amount of time each day. Uh, financially, you know, it, it more than pays the bills. I do okay with it, which then allows me to invest more time into scaling the business to the next level. Mm -hmm. For the long-term vision, to be honest, I'm not sure. I'm kind of enjoying where I'm at now. I'm, I'm enjoying the process. I'm enjoying learning. I've learned more in the last three months than I did do in the last two years building six-figure businesses, you know. You mentioned, this, that, you mentioned that Kevin is someone that is in Leeds, so it doesn't mean your clients will be most mostly local or are you open to having clients worldwide? So I think half of my clients are in the UK. Okay. Now, my messages are targeted at UK-based clients uh, only because it's easier for me to meet with them. You want to meet them in person? like on Yes, a so meet them in person, given the opportunity and given the current world circumstances, that makes it a little bit trickier. Mm -hmm. But my goal was to be able to arrange events where we can meet up, Beautiful. even things like, uh, I don't know, I'll go, I'll go hire a boat and we'll go spend a day on a boat or we'll go do some seminars and stuff together. We'll go to some events and meet some of the contacts that I know that are quite high up. Um, but I think half of my clients are overseas anyway. But I think they naturally came to work with me because they know me from my other businesses. I've already built the trust with them. So they know me quite well. They know what I've accomplished before. And they saw an opportunity to kind of build their own version of this. So they did inquire about coaching options. Uh, and I have agreed to work with them. But as long as everything else is in alignment, it's not, you know, I'm not going to exclude someone because they live in a different country. But my messages are usually targeted at people that live in the UK because it's that extra little thing that I have in common with them, that extra little connection I have with them. How do you get those clients? What's your marketing strategy? So the majority of, in fact, I think all of my clients are people that have already known me from previous businesses on Facebook. So the business I ran previously, uh, which was my biggest business, that kind of grew to a level I never expected. Uh, the majority of my clients have come through that. A handful of them have come through uh, like mutual friends that have seen something I've shared and posted. Um, I have shared some stuff recently about completely not about coaching, completely not about business. You know, it's basically just a man to man approach where I offered my help and my guidance based on what I know. If anyone's feeling stuck, I offered to support them. Uh, I started a, a charity thing recently where I wanted to create uh, little gift boxes, which I'm going to hand out to children for Christmas. So nice. it's like and per box and we got a little teddy in there a little book and these a couple of little bits hot chocolate sachets and stuff Beautiful. just like a uh, christmas boxes for kids so i posted some things like that and a few people have reached out to me and said that's amazing what you're doing you know you seem like a great guy and then i think they've gone and looked and seen that i do coaching and because i've already built the trust before they've even seen anything about coaching they've then approached me and said john what what's this coaching about what do you actually do and ultimately what they wanted to know was how is it I can help them? And obviously when we've jumped on a call and we've discussed in detail, I found out specifically what they want to achieve. I then either said, yes or no, I can help you achieve that. So some of them have kind of accidentally fallen into, uh, into my small network and have decided to work with me long-term. So it's been pretty cool. That's amazing. Wow. Do you have your own podcast? No. So <laughs> Uh, believe it or not, I've never been a fan of video. Um, I've always decided against it. And I've realized what the reason for that is. And it's because I've always thought you have to script everything. And I hate reading scripts. No, huh? This style is great. You ask me a question and we just get carried away and we, we chat and like two mates at the pub. It's great. But 
And I think you can do that with a podcast. You know, I've, I've, I've been on a couple of podcasts over the last couple of months and it's been a whole lot of fun. Yeah. And I've toyed with the idea of starting my own podcast, but where I'm at now, it's not at the top of my priority list, but it's on my to-do list, but it's not at the top. So at the moment, there are other things I need to put in place before I look at that as a serious option. But I think I would enjoy it if I could click my fingers and have a podcast that was running now. The reason I'm I, asking this is because, you know, I was like you, I was always afraid of the camera and all that. I didn't want to be on a camera and all that. But then, you know, the, the more I get into business and all that, I realize I, I learned that the two best way to establish yourself as an expert, as an authority in your niche is one, either you write a book or you get a podcast. That's number one. And number two is because honestly, I love connecting with people, with like-minded people, getting to know amazing people. And that's the most, it's not just about, you know, monetizing it or all that. It's about connecting. It's all about connections in the right way and see how we can help each other yeah. and just learning about new people. That's what I enjoy the most. And, uh, and also for you, I will share with you the story of a guy. I don't know him personally, but I, I love listening to podcasts. This is a guy, I forgot his name right now, but I'll send you his, his podcast after He's built an amazing seven, high seven figure business. All his marketing is, for example, let's say you're in a coaching or consulting business. You have to look for clients. You have to do reach out with us through email or calls. So for example, let's say you call the CEO, whatever this company say, Hey, my name is uh, whatever. And I want, I want to see if, uh, if you need any help with your Facebook, uh, you know, whatever, uh, marketing, whatever, most unlikely will either hang up on you or they will say, sorry, well, you have someone on board or oh, the person is not available. However, if you turn the table and say, hey, my name is John. I'm the host of uh, John's Awesome Podcast. I love what you're doing. And I would love to have to bring you or your CEO, your marketing director, whatever on board so that he or she can share yep. their story and, and, and spread their message. Now they're much, infinitely much more receptive. The likelihood of them saying yes is like through the roof, 99%. And then basically what you're doing, you're turning the discovery call into a podcast. Sure, because you, you've pre, pre-selected in advance the, the type of person that would be a potential customer or client. You did research. You know what questions you need to answer, just like you would do in a normal discovery call. So you just turn it into a podcast. You ask your question. But the main thing here is to establish rapport and trust with them so they can see you as a normal human being. And then just like having a normal conversation, me and you, at one at a point, you will ask me, so what do you do? I say, I do this and this. And, this. and then the person says, because because you've done your research properly, you've you've clear, clearly identified the type of person you want to work with. Say, hey, that's my, my, my issue. Can you help me with that? Then it's not a sale anymore. It's like you helping the person. So by, by implementing that, that guy has built a high seven-figure business in a niche. Competition has become completely irrelevant to this guy. He doesn't have a competition. So that's one thing that I've been telling to everyone that I know, every podcast that I've done on this, uh, I mean, since I started. If you're in a, in a consulting business and you need clients, target the clients, forget ads. Do this instead. You spent, this guy basically, from what he says, is costing me $200 to produce a podcast because he's doing all the, he's outsourcing all the, yeah. the, the editing and all that. So it's got him more $200, but for each $200 he spends, He's turning it into a $4,000 client. I don't know about you, but I would do that every day. I, I think it's an incredibly, it's probably the best way, from my understanding, to create a network and bring in clients and sales and leads, whatever it is that you do. Unlimited leads. Organically yeah. or with very low cost. You know, it's either zero or very low. Yeah. I mean, this guy's paying 200 bucks. But he's doing this on a high level. He's signing 4K clients or above. You know, he probably assigns a couple after each podcast. It's worth him doing. But for those people who are wanting to do something organically, I think it's a huge opportunity, our podcast. I've uh, I've got two virtual assistants that I hired. Uh, they both work me. They've been working for some time. You know, I've got a handful of VAs from my previous business. Mm -hmm. and two of them now are actively putting together podcast plans to find podcasts for me to jump on as long as everything kind of lines up and it makes sense for me to be on that podcast. So they both work a couple of hours. They work about four hours per day between the two yeah. of them finding podcasts for me to it's jump just on. just a beautiful way not only to get an unlimited, highly targeted clients, but mind you, not everyone that you bring on is going to be a good customer, a good client. Yeah. 
yeah. that's fine. But because you've established the report, you haven't, you didn't do like a hard sell on them. You will respect that, and they will more than likely either refer you to people. You can just say, "Hey, by the way, John, do you know anyone who would be a good fit for me to be on, on, on? Not trying to be a customer, to be on my podcast, because your goal is not to bring to bring to make a sale on the podcast, just to get them on the podcast, get to know them, ask the question you need to ask, and build rapport and, and, and trust. Once you've done that, then they will ask you, hey, can you help me with that? Sure. Let's uh, schedule a call after that and we can dive deeper into your, your personal business uh, situation and, and see how, if we can help you. And at that time, it's not a matter of making a sale, but a matter of you not screwing it up. The sale is done. So uh, this is a perfect way for you. And also what I would recommend that when you start that, you can tap into your existing network. For example, get some of your former colleagues, at least until you get say 10, 15, 20, episodes in your portfolio because before you reach out to all the clients they want to say who's that guy is this is he legit yeah. so reach out to people you know that you work with that uh, you know that uh, you that you uh, helped get results do that build a portfolio of 5 10 20 however many you need which shouldn't take you more than two weeks to to get and once you done that just ask your your va to reach out you tell them exactly what kind of people you want to work with ask them to look for your potential kevins Yep. Get them on board. If you do that, that right there is, is the foundation for a seven figure. If I was in a consulting business, I would do that all day, but I'm an e-commerce guy. So in e-commerce, it, it's not applicable, but still I keep saying, and sometimes I'm, th I'm thinking maybe I should get into consulting because that's way too good to pass up. Plus, it's fun talking to to cool people on on a podcast, you know. I agree. I'm sure there must be some way you could do it. You might have to do a slight twist on. I don't know. I'm. I would like to think there is a way you could do it somehow. So I know I know a guy who, I'm going to say about a year ago, was a fitness professional. He did a lot of online personal training and local Perfect personal training. Um. He kind of stepped into podcasts slightly, but only dabbled with it. Well, he now teaches people how to run five day challenges on Facebook. Um, and that's become his main focus. He nice. still has clients for the uh, for the Fit Pro stuff, um, but his main focus is on teaching people how to run the five day challenges. He teaches people to run their own podcasts, mm -hmm. and he also jumps on podcasts. And within a year, he's at over a hundred k per month. That's how much yeah. he is just from this. Exactly, because you it's all about working with your ideal clients, and that's the best way. You pre-select exactly. You tell you if you're doing yourself, do it yourself. You have a VA. Tell him exactly what you're looking for, and he or she can get you lined up. And again, it's it's not rocket science. I mean, the the closing rate is gonna be off the charts, as opposed mm -hmm. to you cold calling, cold emailing. You will get you're lucky to get five, ten percent closing rate. With this, you get 80, 90 percent. Because who doesn't want to be on a podcast to talk about themselves and talk about their business? Everybody wants the 15 minute of, of fame. And you use that to build rapport, to get to know them, know the business, basically a discovery call on steroids, you know? Yeah, I agree. So highly recommend, John, get that going. That alone can catapult your business to the stratosphere in no time. Just get, uh, get uh, contact your existing clients or people you worked with, help, help them get results, build five, 10, 20, however many you need just to get the base foundation in your portfolio. Shouldn't take him more than a month. Mm -hmm. And after that, you're off to the races, my friend. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, I'm definitely bumping it up my priority list after today. I'll send you that, that podcast with that guy. Listen to it. It's absolutely brilliant the way he does it. I'm sure I missed a few steps in the process, but yeah, listen to it. It's very enjoyable. And yeah, that, yeah, can, sure. that can really, and anyone listening to this right now, if you're in a consulting business or coaching business and you're struggling to get high quality leads, there's no better way. I agree. I agree fully. So, yeah. So, so you, you mentioned something beautiful earlier and, you know, the theme of this podcast is leaders with a heart and that is people who are not only successful, but also having a beautiful heart and helping. And you mentioned something about doing like a chocolate box. Tell us more about that. Yeah. So it's a, it's basically a small box and we kind of budget five pounds um, and, and people can, they, they can they can donate and send money my way and we just create some more boxes but my plan was i wanted to be able to give back to kids you know for a lot of people christmas time is a struggle around the world considering the current world circumstances there's a hell of a lot more people that are struggling this year yeah. 
I kind of don't want that to have a knock-on effect on the kids. I think we do quite well at shielding the children away from what's going on in the world. And I want them to make sure they have something there for Christmas Day, for, you know, for the parents who are struggling to provide uh, for the kids on Christmas Day. I've been there myself, you know. I've not shared the stories on that, but I've been in that situation myself uh, when I basically said to my girlfriend, we can't do Christmas this year. I have no money. And the thought of other kids having to go through that is 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 unpleasant. So putting together little boxes uh, and we basically, the people who want them, they can reach out to me. Just let me know where you live and we post them to you and stuff. And they come, you get like a little teddy in there, the age range boxes. So a little teddy, normally like a, a, a small book, just something to read. Tiny little toys, um, little sachets of hot chocolate and things like that. Just a cool little box. Nothing that you're going to open up and go, whoa, but there's a nice little teddy, a book, and just some cool little things. It's a gesture that counts, yeah. Absolutely. That's amazing. That's wonderful. Wow. And, um, you know, I just had a presentation for two hours. For I was invited for a big uh, online conference because nowadays, unfortunately, we cannot do physical conferences. It's all online. And my topic was how to make your e-commerce and Amazon FBA business completely competition-proof by aligning a cost to your business. Like, for example, in me, uh, I don't know if you're I'm sure you're familiar with it. I will be going to Argentina as soon as physically possible to manufacture a high-end leather product. And for each unit of that product I'll be selling, I'll be, I'll be donating a pair of eyeglasses to kids in Argentina that cannot see, but need, that, that cannot afford it, but need it. So it's all using the principle of one-to-one. -one. For each unit you sell, you give one off. And, and, and I did a whole two-hour two presentation on that. The person, the people loved it. And that's something that we can apply in anything, whether it's in e-commerce or consulting, coaching. You can do, for example, for every sale, you can obviously donate a percentage of proceeds to a cause that's due to your heart. You can plant trees. You can send, you can send uh, a backpack filled with uh, school supplies for kids and, and, and so on and so forth. Like Akbar is, is, is a building walls. I believe it cost them, what, uh, $750 to build a, build a well. That to us doesn't sound much, but that can be the difference between life and death and being able to live. Because from what I, I understand, for these people in the remote villages, just they have to physically walk like five, 10 miles, carry a big bucket in their, in their head. And that takes them four or five hours a day that, that these four or five hours a, week, a day could be better spent, especially for these children, to be in school than walking and, and all that be malnourished all that so there's a lot of things we can do that again i i'm a firm believer that you know we have this we've been wrongly uh, led to believe that capitalism is wrong is all about being greedy is all about you know screwing the other guy yes there's a lot of people that some people that do that but ultimately capitalism can be good i see capitalism as just like a loaded gun or money or a, or a Cars key. Yes, they can be used for bad, but if you use them properly, they can be used for tremendously good things. So, and I believe that us as entrepreneurs, we have a duty and a responsibility to do good, not just because it's a right thing to do as a human being, but also because, you know, doing good is good for business. People want to do business with businesses that are socially aligned. Like for example, I was just using this example. Let's say you want to, I'm selling e-commerce. You want to sell this, this mouse. There's 2,500 people selling that mouse. And instead, I put in a nice leather pouch, for example, and I say, for each one of these that I sell, you're going to be basically making it possible for a kid, say, in Thailand, in a remote village, to have one hour of, of computer classes or something like that. Yep. Of course, 99% of people would rather get this one with a cause, even if it's going to cost them a few bucks extra. But it's okay because, because most people want to do good. I mean, but a lot of them either are financially constrained or don't have the time or don't know where to start or what to do. But if you and me, we allow our customers or clients to do good to the purchase of our products, we're basically transferring the power, empowering them to do good. And when they buy something from us, they will feel empowered and say, hey, I'm doing something good. And so instead of buying, for example, just one mouse, they might pick up three or four and they will definitely, you know, post it on the social media, start to the friends, family, whatever. And what does that is something magical. Not only the client, the customer you get is no longer just a, a one-time buyer. It's going to be 
a loyal fan, a raving fan, and ultimately is going to become an evangelical fan. And that's the ultimate goal for any business because once you reach that level, they do your marketing for you. And that's the ultimate goal for any business. So that's why doing good, again, it's a no brainer. Because again, us, us, you know, um, entrepreneurs, we're way past beyond. We're not, we're blessed not to be struggling with, hey, where, what I'm going to eat today, where I'm going to sleep, how I'm going to, where I'm going to sleep. We have all that already covered. We're blessed with that. But there are people in the world that don't even have that. And my goal, and also my, again, as I said in the, in the, in the presentation earlier, this is not a podcast. This is, a, I want, to, it's more than a podcast. I want to build a movement, a movement of other, enlightened entrepreneurs so we can inspire each other and others to build not only impactful uh, businesses, business with a heart, but also to give hope, to give, and to inspire other entrepreneurs to do good as well. Because me and you or not any single individual person can change the world. But if each one of us changes the world of one person and they pass it forward before long, it's going to be a different world. And that's what we need right now. We need some goodness in this world because unfortunately right now the world is going to the path of negativity. And that's something that we can change. And it's not difficult. It's not costing us extra money. One, one, one uh, obstacle that they can see in, uh, in the e-commerce field is, for example, let's say you sell this and you give one unit for free. Some people might think that there's extra cost, or extra expenses, yeah. but it's not. It's actually some of the best money you can spend on, on advertising because the return you get, no amount of traditional advertising will be able to, to get you that. The, the loyalty, the it's all about not only you feeling good that you're doing good, but transferring the power of doing good to your customers, empowering your customers, your clients. And that's something that, as I keep saying, that's one of my favorite ways of saying it. When you see the the gratitude and the high of someone that you just up that has nothing to give you back, the smile. It touches you so deeply. It's almost like, a, like an orgasm for the soul. You know, it's something that is indescribable, at least for me personally. Maybe I'm, I hope that there's more and more people like that. That I agree. I, I think uh, by human nature, I think we all want to contribute. We just need to find a way to do this. And of course, we need to look after ourselves to a certain extent. You know, we cannot... We cannot sabotage ourselves by looking after other people. You have to make sure. So there's the analogy that you have to put on your own mask first. You know, Absolutely. when you're in the, you have to put on your own mask. Once yeah. that's done, you can then look after other people. Absolutely. So human nature, we want to and need to contribute to our close families and to people outside of our families. We want to do that and we need to do that. But most people don't know a way to do it efficiently without causing any harm to themselves. Yeah, it doesn't have to start with someone at the other side of the world. You can start with someone in your, in your city, in your street or whatever, your neighbor, especially now with all, all, all the negative impact of, of the virus. A lot of business have been decimated. So a lot of need out there. So even your neighbor, just go say, hi, is there anything I can help you with? Or when I'm just having a conversation, hey, how's your day going? How are you doing? Just treating people with, with, uh, with decency, with respect. You know, it's all about inspiring others and giving hope to those that really need it. That, hey, there's, because a lot of people have been so, I would say, have gone through such a, so, so many bad things that they've almost tend to have lost hope in humanity. But if you can just give them that little bit of just talking to them with respect. For example, let's say there's lots of, I don't know about the UK, but then in Canada and in the US, there's a lot of homeless people right now. A lot of time we tend to ignore them because they smell bad or they we felt threatened. But hey, look past beyond that. Look past beyond the, the dirty clothes, the smell. The, hey, that's a human being. Talk to them on a soul to soul level. Hey, what's how's it going? How's your day? What's your name? And if you see the same people every day, buy them a cup of coffee, a sandwich, give them a book. Maybe that person was you know a lot of people they they go through a divorce or a bad business deal and they end up on the street. Nobody chooses to be on the street. Because life, you know, life is not fair at times. You get down in the street, whatever. Give him hope, a smile, a conversation, a book, a cup of coffee. Even, a, for example, you give someone, you talk to them, you give them a book. That might be the spark that say, hey, yes, life hasn't been easy. I'm down. But hey, there is ho still hope. And, and I, I'm capable of so much more. I can do so much more than what, what I, where I am right now. That's not me. That doesn't define me. I'm so much more than that. 
it's all about inspiring the people that are that are needed the most and us that are blessed to be beyond that our responsibility is infinitely bigger because we can make an impact and inspire each other and i'm not saying we should donate a million dollars no it's just about helping one person one person at a time for each sale for example my my and my product i will be donating for each sale a pair of eyeglasses someone else it might be something else so each of us has to identify what is what 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 causes dear to our heart and what makes sense to our business that relates to our to our clients and customers that's something that each of us will have to do you know yep. on their own but there is ways there's unlimited ways we can help and we can contribute and it, and it doesn't cost us anything extra and even if it does cost a little bit extra the return will be infinitely incalculable. I agree. Completely agree. So I'm some, that's something I'm extremely passionate. And, and that was, and I said to the person uh, during the presentation, Hey, when I talk about it, I get goosebumps. I talk not from the mouth, but the heart and, and I have a hard time shutting it, shutting up because I can keep on going. <laughs> I'm extremely passionate about that. That's it. This is why we align ourselves with people that have exactly. Uh, similar mindset to us, similar goals, similar aspirations. It's all about, yeah, it's all about being a person, human being, and ultimately a leader with a heart. What is a leader? A leader is someone that actually contributes and makes an impact. And what's more beautiful than a leader with a heart? That's a, that's the highest essence of anyone, in my, in my view, that anyone can achieve. Yep. And by that, it doesn't mean that you must be like a seven-figure earner. Even the guy that is just having a menial job, he can be a leader in his own way by being able to, to provide for his family, of, even for himself. Especially in these days, it's, it's tough. It's not easy. It's true. But it's leadership. So yeah, man, I'm super passionate about that. And, I, and I'm sure, and I can see that you too, you, you do that. You have a beautiful art, especially what you're doing with the chocolate boxes right now for Christmas. That's amazing. So do you have any plan to do anything else beyond Christmas or? At the moment, no. So after hearing you speak, I'm kind of toying with a few things in my head. So I will give this more thought on what the best way is for me to be able to contribute on a higher level. I think to allow my clients the opportunity to contribute with no extra effort or thought on their part, because people want to give back, but they're not sure how to do it. If I can take that weight off their shoulders and just, you know, even a small portion of the, the, the client fees, Mm -hmm. um if i can donate that to something something that kind of is, is close to me anyway it doesn't have to give money it can be for example you can send for each new client you can send a backpack filled with school supplies. yeah yeah I, I agree i think it would definitely be plant something a tree, plant a tree or feed a homeless feed a feed a uh you know orphan doesn't yep. especially I like agree. A struggle, it takes less than a, a dollar or two per day i think there's lots that can be done yeah so yeah it's all about you know as i said just Find out what's dear to you, to you, what's what you're passionate about, and what makes sense to you and your niche and your and your, and your clients and your, and all that. So that's something that is very easy to. Uh, I mean, it's not rocket science, and it's fun because once you start doing that, you know, you be, it makes you makes you makes you makes you feel meaningful, happy, fulfilled. You know, I've been I've been blessed to have lived in ten countries, four continents. I've been in a lot of. I've had a very interesting life so far, but. Nothing has made me feel so much alive, so much fulfilled than right now. Because now that I'm blessed to be in a position to do something that has actual meaning, impact, it's, it's, it's much more beyond just the fact of making money just for me and just to get to buy a car. A, a, I, I was never into, you know, material things, but I'm just using it as an example to, to get a Lamborghini or a mansion or the latest iPhone 15 or whatever number it is now or whatever. It's not about that for me. It's about helping. And because of that, honestly, man, I feel extremely alive. I feel grateful. I'm a different person. I'm a, it makes you become a different person because business is a journey. It's not just about what you have to learn, but most importantly, who you have to become. Much more, than, much more than a million dollars you'll get, the person you'll become is much more valuable to you as, as a human being. I agree. So yeah, so man. You've said some. You've shared some wise words today. Thank you, and I can keep on going on and on for hours. I just <laughs> just about an hour presentation to two hours, but yeah. uh, but no, I'm not gonna do that here. That's fine. But yeah, anyway, man, that's amazing. I'm super honored and proud to have you here among us. That's amazing. Uh, so if someone wants to reach out to you, John, what's the best way to do so? 
Um, so they can come grab me on Facebook and have a look for John Paragon. There's not too many of us around, so you should be able to find me. I'll be that handsome chap, no doubt wearing a cap. I do like my caps. Um, you can also check out uh, my one of my websites, which is Paragon30. So Paragon30.com. Uh, that's probably going to be the easiest way to find me. Uh, nice. But yeah, come grab me on Facebook, drop me a message. We'll have a chat. You know, I'm we're all humans. I speak with all of my clients, even the ones who don't work with me on a professional level. You know, multiple people will message me or call me on a daily basis if they want to bounce ideas off me or they want some general advice. I'm here to help people. You know, it's not yeah. all about the business. I want to make sure people are doing well. So if you've got any questions, even if you want to bounce a business idea off me, I love this stuff. So message me, happy to jump on a call and I will happily spend 30 minutes or longer on a call with you just throwing ideas out there, discussing what can be done. So, yep, come grab me on Facebook um, and, and check out Paragon30.com. I'm sure they can find me somewhere. I'm not that hard to find. Yeah, awesome, John. Thank you very much. You're definitely a true leader with a heart, and I'm proud to add you to the family. So that's amazing. With this, I will wish you the, a great day and a wonderful weekend, and we'll, we'll, we'll keep talking after that. Thank you, brother. Very much appreciate it and happy holidays. For sure. Cheers, man. See you later.